This is WAFB News at 6, the newscast watched by more people than any other. You're looking at a mobile Skycam live picture of Alex Box Stadium, the beginning of a baseball season that could lead to national attention again. We'll have more later in the broadcast in a live report. Good evening, I'm Donna Britt. And I'm George Sells. Our top story tonight, sheriff's detectives say the armed robbery of the Segan Lane Winn-Dixie three weeks ago is related to the murder of one of the store's clerks. And they say now they finally got the proof to back it up. Mark A. Morris was already behind bars, charged with a January 22nd robbery. Today, the 26-year-old Morris was accused of kidnapping Jacqueline Mullen, Purdue, shooting her twice in the head and dumping her body in St. Gabriel. According to documents filed by the sheriff's office, it appears that Jacqueline Purdue was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. Detectives believe Morris was left behind by two other robbers and carjacked Purdue, who was just getting to work around 6 a.m. The other two men arrested who had their heads covered at the time, John Green III and Jonathan Molden, have now been charged with principal to first-degree murder and aggravated kidnapping in the Winn-Dixie holdup and robbery. Baton Rouge police have arrested the suspect in the rape that occurred Monday night in the parking lot of Casino Rouge. Baton Rouge police went to Livingston Parish along with Louisiana State Police this afternoon to arrest the man. He's identified as 35-year-old Samuel Robinson of Johnson Lane and Walker. WAP 9 News asked Robinson if he had anything to say, and he replied, I didn't do it. The victim, a 44-year-old woman, told police that she was approached from behind and forced into her own car at knife point. The suspect left, she says, in his own car. It's a lucky Friday the 13th for a Baton Rouge girl who's been in therapy the last four weeks for the gunshot she suffered at the Martin Luther King Parade. Seven-year-old Shanice Anderson left the hospital in New Orleans around 3.30 this afternoon, so at last report, she still hadn't arrived home at her house yet. Shanice's mother filed a lawsuit this week against the school board and the parade's organizer, the NAACP, claiming they did not provide adequate protection for Shanice and her schoolmates. And someone is dragging Walker students' names through the mud. Hundreds of profane letters have popped up around town, letters containing students' names with lewd descriptions. WAFB 9 News reporter Tarek Miner spoke with police and has details. No, I think somebody's sick out there. Someone is attacking Walker students on paper, slandering their reputation in pornographic letters. Police say the motive is jealousy, targeting the town's best scholars and athletes. The victims are devastated, embarrassed. You know, they don't know what to think about it. They don't know why they are victims. These letters are too graphic to show. On them are students' names and descriptions of sex acts. Police have taken nearly 800 off the streets, from businesses, phone booths, even students' driveways. They, they've been all over the place. I've seen, I've seen one in, in Walmart and Denham, and I've seen them around here. Police say these slanderous letters have been circulating around Livingston Parish for over a month now. Some of them handwritten, some of them typed, and some enclosed in a plastic bag with money inside. School officials say letters started appearing at high schools and are now showing up at the junior high level. Principals say they won't be tolerated. In this school alone, we've suspended three students already that have had these in their possession. Dice says his school is working with police, taking handwriting analysis to find a match. This elaborate attempt to ruin a reputation is the first police say they've seen of its kind. In Walker, Tarek Minor, WAFB9 News. Since all these are targeting high-profile students, good students, good athletes, uh, some are calling this the revenge of the nerds. The profane letters contain names of students from Walker High School, Walker Junior High, and Westside High. The town of Walker has issued a $500 reward for any information leading to an arrest. It's being called a power luncheon in Metairie today. Edwin Edwards met with more than 20 of his key political supporters. And what they talked about was another Edwards run for governor. Sheriff Harry Lee was just one of the guests on a list that read like a who's who in New Orleans. Lee says he believes Edwards is testing the political waters. Edwards was reached by phone just moments ago and said, I made an off-the-cuff remark about how retiring from public life did not succeed with getting prosecutors off my back, so maybe I ought to run. That was the off-the-cuff comment. Well, a top political analyst this evening says David Duke probably cannot win that race for the U.S. Congress from suburban New Orleans. With word of First District Congressman Bob Livingston considering retirement, Duke says he may run for the seat. Political analyst Gus Weil says Duke's motives may be more financial than political. And there's a lot of folks out there who, for one reason or another, are dissatisfied with their lives, hate the government, hate someone different than them, hate minorities, and they're still prepared to send him money. So he won't win, 
but he'll make some money. Duke currently holds a position with the Republican Party in St. Tammany Parish. We have a warning for you about the weekend. Details up next on a plant test that might look like a real disaster, so stay tuned. And later on WAFB 9 News, are you ready? From flowers to a 50-year-old love story, I'm Valentina Wilson. I'll have your Valentine's preview ahead. What a beautiful way to end the week. Lots of sunshine, but it won't stay that way. This evening, the sky will stay clear, though. It'll be chilly, 50 degrees, and there's more in eight minutes. Stop by Circuit City's President's Weekend Sale today, and you'll pay no interest and no payments for six months on all purchases $3.99 and up, like this Hewlett Packard Multimedia Computer System, featuring a 200 megahertz Intel Pentium processor with MMX technology, Hewlett Packard Color Monitor, and Color Inkjet Printer, just $10.99.99 after instant discount and mail-in rebate. This Zenith Compact VHS camcorder is just $3.49.99, and all home audio is on sale right now at Circuit City. On February 14th, come join the Grand Bayou Casino's Valentine Day celebration. We'll give away $500 in cash. $500 in cash. Register today. Grand Bayou Casino at the Bayou Texaco. Hi, pal. Thanks for telling us about Alabama. The mountains are beautiful, and we're having so much fun. Rock climbing, water skiing, fishing, camping. We hiked over to the lake and saw deer. Then climbed all the way to the top of the mountain. What a view! For your free guide to an unforgettable Alabama vacation, call today. 1-800-ALABAMA. All-Star Ford at Denham Springs at All-Star Ford Lincoln Mercury in Gonzales. Two great dealers bring you two ways to get one solid truck. The 98 Ford F-150 XLT Magnum. Packed with all this and more for an outstanding All-Star price of the $15,888. Or lease it for an incredible $1.99 a month. Your choice at All-Star Ford Lincoln Mercury in Gonzales or All-Star Ford Denham Springs. Get the best in price, service, and selection with the All-Star Team. Two dealers, two deals, one truck. Ordinarily, this would be considered a sports story only, but when the local university's baseball team is defending national champion, the opening of the LSU baseball season is real news. And a beautiful night it is for baseball. WAP's Victor Howe, live at Alex Box Stadium. Victor. George, it is a gorgeous night for baseball. The last couple of years, of course, it has been downright frigid when the Tigers start baseball season, but not tonight. An absolutely gorgeous night here at the box as LSU finally opens defense of its two-time national championship. Of course, tonight the first of a three-game weekend series against the Cages from USL. USL already has a little experience this season as they swept a three-game series with Sam Houston State last weekend over in Lafayette. Want to give you a sneak preview of the brand new look here at the box behind behind me and over on the right field wall. LSU is now showing its latest edition of the national championship sign. You see they've added another baseball, a couple of different shades, and they've updated it to show all the 1997s for the championships that LSU got last year, of course, with the SEC and going on to win the national championship. Now the Tigers will first pitch with the Cajuns tonight will be 7 o'clock. Doug Thompson is getting the start tonight for the Tigers, of course, he won the uh, national championship game in the College World Series against Alabama last year up in Omaha, and a big return for Eddie Furness, who we will feature a little later on in sports here tonight at 6 o'clock. You know, George, one thing about this baseball game, when you go to other sporting events, football, even going back as far as football season, and now basketball season at the Maravich Assembly Center, a lot of the employees who work the concessions here at the box also work at the Maravich Assembly Center and, and things like that. For instance, the Kentucky game last week, Wednesday, we'd see someone say, hey, how you doing? The first thing they'd say, 12 days, 13 hours, and 30 minutes before first pitch. They were already counting down for LSU baseball, expecting a great crowd on hand tonight, well over 6,500, first pitch at 7, and we'll have more on the baseball team in just about 10 minutes for WFB Sports. Okay, Victor, thank you. Donna's doing the same sort of counting right now. <laughs> uh -huh. Temperature out there, by the way, is 60 degrees. Great night, but take a jacket. Mm, some of us have to work. Oh, you might want to check this list with the State Department of Revenue. Former Governors Edwin Edwards and Buddy Romer, current Governor Mike Foster and Secretary of State Fox McKithen are all on the state's unclaimed property property list and you might be too. Edwards has learned he has $2,200 coming to him, unclaimed money from a mineral lease. Former Governor Romer is due $17. Governor Mike Foster's 1995 campaign is due $533 in, un in refund unrefunded utility deposits and Secretary of State Fox McKithen can claim $50 that somehow ended up with the state. 
Well, Exxon Chemical says you may see some flaring and hear some noise in the next few weeks. The Exxon plant is preparing for a shutdown for maintenance. A spokesman for the Scenic Highway plant says some flaring will probably occur on Sunday and more flaring starting next weekend. Exxon says the flaring is a safe way to dispose of excess product during a turnaround. Materials to be flared are primarily light hydrocarbons. Noon in French settlement tomorrow. Steve Schneider and I are in the crew of Diversion Mardi Gras Parade, and so we're watching this weather, Mike Graham. Uh, tomorrow, be, uh, I think you'll make uh, no problem there, but Sunday is a different matter. Our low this morning was 42 degrees, and that's exactly normal for the date. But on this date in 1899, we had the all-time record low in Baton Rouge. The temperature then got down to 2 Two. Ooh, ooh. Count them, both, both degrees. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, we have a problem brewing this weekend straight ahead. When I first found out that I was going to be working for Channel 9 and going to be working in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, I tell you, I had no idea what I was going to be getting into. There were so many new people, there were so many new things to learn, but luckily I had Vernon and a whole working family to teach me the ropes. When I first got here, I didn't know what a crawfish was, I didn't even eat seafood, so Vernon told me it was called a mud bug, and I hate bugs. And what do I think of them now? Mmm, Tony and me may sasa bon. Vernon says I'm getting too good at that. The prices are great, and the selections are second to none. I love my Jerry Lane Suburban. I tell everybody about it. I think it's great. <laughs> my favorite thing about my Jerry Lane GMC truck is all the room you have on the inside. You can count on Jerry Lane Buick GMC. You can count on Jerry Lane. It's not just about saving money. It's about spending time, just dropping by, and creating bonds, rather than simply buying them. At Edward Jones, it's never just about investing. It's about knowing you and your dreams. Edward Jones, investing in you and your dreams. It's official. For a limited time, Lincoln Mercury and Robinson Brothers have joined forces for a special luxury pricing event for the Baton Rouge market. With help from the factory, we can now offer special savings on Lincoln Continental, Lincoln Mark 8, and the Lincoln Town Car. You choose just $4.99 a month. Three great Lincolns, one great payment, $4.99 a month. Hurry, time on this offer is limited. Come to Robinson Brothers Lincoln Mercury, I-12 at airline, under the giant American flag for over 51 years. Well, the sun went down at nine minutes before six o'clock. You're looking at a beautiful evening twilight in Baton Rouge as we face to the west, and the forecast for tomorrow indicates some more clouds, so we might not see this picture again for a couple of days. Partly cloudy weather during much of the day with clouds increasing tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. The high today was 66, and it should be much the same tomorrow. As you go out tonight, the weather will be chilly, but it will be a nice night to start the uh, weekend activities, and tomorrow's forecast is not bad for us. The rain problems are for people to the west of us, and we will see our share of that Sunday and again on Monday. Take a look at how this is expected to develop. First of all, we have high pressure controlling the weather in Louisiana, and an old boundary out in the Gulf of Mexico. But there is a problem to our west. This is going to move to the east, mostly upper-level disturbances, and as it does so, it's going to generate a low-pressure center along the western end of that front, near Brownsville, Texas, moving slowly out into the Gulf. It will tap that Gulf moisture, it will send it northward and westward into Texas, and then gradually, as the system moves east, we will see our share of it as the clouds move in Saturday night and the chance of rain begins to grow, with rain becoming likely in our forecast for Sunday.
We have no rain around here right now. As a matter of fact, the rain has moved into Florida. This is the system that moved through early today and gave us five one hundredths of an inch of rain in the early hours of the morning just after midnight. But Louisiana has no rain to contend with. That's verified on this view from WAFB's Doppler Plus radar. Here's the satellite picture, and you can see the old system last night and the clouds with that upper-level system beginning to reach into the Gulf to tap that moisture. And it's going to move over our region later on over the course uh, of the next uh, 24 hours. This is the system doing it. The jet stream flow is split, so much of the energy is moving on the southern stream over northern Mexico and out into the Gulf. And on the very left side of your screen, the next weather system is getting set to batter the California coast, already battered by so many storms this winter. Our temperature this morning was chilly. We got to 42 degrees in Baton Rouge, and then we moved to 66 for a high. It's 60 right now, temperatures having fallen into the 50s, mainly in the northern part of the state. Tonight's lows probably will drop to where they were last night, down into the low 40s, the 50s in South Texas, and there's the forecast for tomorrow. Partly cloudy here with clouds increasing from the west. There's that area of rain. Watch for it to spread eastward into our region on Sunday. Let's take a look along the Louisiana coast. There is a small craft advisory in effect because the winds are brisk northeasterly to easterly at up to 25 knots, and the sea's very rough, as you see, in the pinpoint forecast. Clear weather this evening. It's beautiful outside, but cool to chilly, and it will be chilly overnight. Our low in the low 40s. At daybreak, we'll keep the sky clear for a little while, and then the clouds move in, becoming partly cloudy. 66 degrees for a high temperature. The clouds increasing Saturday night. Sunday, rain is likely, showers and thunderstorms. A little disturbance, maybe more than a little out in the Gulf of Mexico. The rain carries over into Tuesday, clearing up for the middle of the next work week. Ashley Hunsberger is six years old, goes to Oak Grove Elementary School, and Ashley's picture wins our McDonald's TV9 Color the Weather t-shirt for tonight. Get your entry blank at McDonald's. Mike, rain in February is no big deal, nothing unusual in South Louisiana, but is this just repeated pattern we're seeing, part of the El Nino effect? It is indeed. This is uh, very typical. As remember, in December, I was telling you it'll be interesting in January and February to see how these disturbances interact with that very high-speed jet stream, and we're seeing it. Okay. Is El Nino the reason we haven't had a real long winter at all? Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, El, El Nino was the reason for tonight's homeward traffic yeah. jam, I think. Yeah. <laughs> we'll blame everything That's on Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you, when we come back, the live report on LSU season opener. Don't you know the weather is perfect at Alex Box? And the LSU basketball team has announced point guard Dewan Collins will not play in the next game. It has nothing to do with his injured hand this time. This time it's punishment. Next on WAP 9 Sports. This WAFB stock report is sponsored by Telamerica Long Distance Service. Stain treated nylon plush carpet, only a dollar nine cents a square foot installed with pay. Original Pergo laminate flooring, only three fifty seven a square foot. First quality Bruce hardwood flooring, two ninety eight a square foot. Premium eight by eight ceramic tile, only thirty nine cents each. Make no payment and pay no interest for six full months. Halpins Carpet Max, Baton Rouge and Gonzales. Normally, you'd receive six months. But since I'm in a good mood, you're getting 12 months. 12 months in jail? No, 12 months to pay for your new Big Sur waterbed. <laughs> right now at Big Sur Waterbeds, buy that beautiful new waterbed or bedroom with no down payment, no interest, and no payments for 12 months. You certainly can't object to that. <laughs> Big Sur Waterbeds, America's largest waterbed retailer. Where is that pest control guy? Sorry, hon, I waited last month. My bed, go. If you're still using monthly pest control, call the experts at Sears Home Central. Hi. 
Hi. Our seven-step DuraGuard system was designed with you in mind, with no monthly visits or baseboard sprays. Sears uses long-lasting odorless baits in out-of-the-way places to get the bugs where they hide, so you can go on with your life. Of course, if you need us, we'll come back at your convenience. So for your free home inspection, call the pest control experts at Sears Home Central today. I wasn't going to tell this, but I couldn't go to the game tonight, so I drove by Alex Box Stadium with my windows down, hoping to hear a ball crack against a bat. <laughs> and, then, and then she cried. <laughs> Here's Steve Schneider. There's another sound of the ballpark. A song popular with baseball fans that uses lyrics like, The sun came out today, and we're born again. And some of those fans will probably get goosebumps tonight when John Fogarty's center field blares over the Alec Box Stadium speaker system, signaling the return of college baseball's back-to-back -back national champs. WAFB's Victor Howell joins us live again for the latest on tonight's season opener at the box. Steve, they're not even waiting for music to start because just moments ago they took the field to take the netting down because of batting practice and they got an ovation just to remove all the nets and get ready to really take the take infield practice before they start tonight's game. But it is the season opener for the two-time defending national champion LSU Tigers. They come into this ball game ranked third in the country right now, but one of the last teams in the country to actually get started this season. The Cajuns started their season one week ago over in Lafayette, and they swept the three-game series with Sam Houston State. And they have won four of the last five here in Baton Rouge, so this probably won't be a cakewalk for LSU as tonight starts the first of a three-game weekend series for the Tigers and the Raging Cajuns. Maybe more special for this game for one player more than anybody else, and that would be a certain senior from Nacogdoches, Texas. Probably didn't think that we would call him a senior from Nacogdoches, Texas, but for first baseman Eddie Furness, he plans on this season sitting back, having fun, and taking it all in. Done everything that, that I think I can do to be a better baseball player and to just put on a great show and go down in a blaze of glory. Most baseball fans assumed LSU's 97 regional championship win over South Alabama was Eddie Furness's last game at the box. An assumption supported by statistics. A career 361 batting average, 52 home runs, and 232 RBI. Last June, Furness was drafted in the 14th round by the Minnesota Twins, and it didn't take long for him to decide on his future. I'd probably coming back to LSU next year. Um, you know, it's a good, it's a great opportunity opportunity for me to get some more schooling in, get closer to graduation, uh, work on some things I've been needing to work on. Tonight, number 36 returns to first base for one last go around at the box. Nettie's phenomenal. We all know he can play in the big leagues, but it means so much to us, you know, for L LSU that he's back, you know, just hitting in the middle of that lineup. You know, the guy, you know, he never really lets the pressure get to him. He, he can always perform no matter the situation. He has a lot of things to prove to a lot of people, and he's taken it upon himself to do that. And uh, it's going to be fun to play with Eddie this year. Just last week, Furness was awarded a National Sportsmanship Award, one of only six college athletes in the country to be honored. While his teammates recognize his baseball abilities, they talk more about what type of person he is off the field. For Furness, that's what gives his last year in purple and gold so much meaning. That, to me, is probably more important than any honor I could get athletically, is just to be a good person and, and, and be real. There's no words to describe how thankful I am to be able to come back to LSU, have all the support, have all the opportunities, and, and to take advantage of them like I have. It's, 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 it's an honor. It's a great honor for me. He has some outstanding numbers on the diamond, but maybe most impressive, a 365 average in zoology, and Eddie Furness is on schedule to graduate at the end of the year. Now, we should tell you that he only needs one home run for the entire season to become LSU's all-time home run leader. He is currently tied with Todd Walker at 52, and he also needs two doubles to become LSU's all-time doubles leader. He has 60. Todd Walker has 61. And one thing we should note about Eddie Furness, Steve, and that is he lost 25 pounds coming into the season. He looks great, says he's ready to start stretching some singles into some doubles, and he warns if he's on base, you better keep an eye out because you never know when he's just going to take off and go steal a base. We're not used to seeing that from Eddie Furness, but we may see a little bit of that this year. Of course, you can't wait to hear the chance of Eddie, Eddie, and you know they will come fast and furious when he steps up to the plate fourth in LSU's lineup. Doug Thompson, the winner of the national championship game, takes the mound tonight. First pitch just after 7 o'clock. Baseball is back at the box. LSU and USL will have all the highlights and wrap up for you tonight at 10 o'clock. All right, Victor, we'll be looking for Eddie Furness leading off first tonight. All right, news not as good for another LSU sport, citing his approach to practice and his academic accountability in the classroom. LSU basketball coach John Brady has suspended point guard Dewan Collins for tomorrow's game at Auburn. Collins didn't even make the trip with the team. In a written statement, Brady says Collins has an attitude problem and his recent conduct earned him the suspension. Brady says Collins' status for next Wednesday's home game against Ole Miss will depend on the player's response to this situation. 
Collins is just recovering from a broken bone in his hand that kept him out of three games and rendered him ineffective in three others. Sunday night's big Olympic hockey showdown between the U.S. and Canada will be lacking some of the luster thanks to the Swedes. In their first game of the Nagano Winter Games, the Americans couldn't hold on to a 2-1 to one second period lead. It was Sweden's Daniel Alfredson scoring two goals off Peter Forsberg passes as the reigning Olympic champs take a 4-2 to two verdict. The loss not too damaging for the U.S. though. Right now they're just playing for seeding to go into the quarterfinal round. There's hockey in Baton Rouge tonight. The Kingfish are playing, plus uh, high school basketball. All that coming up tonight at 10 along with baseball. You're going to be a busy man tonight. It'll be uh -huh. fun. Thanks, Steve. We'll be back with romantic advice that is uh, the result of 50 years of research. Valentine's comes early at Woodfin Pontiac Isuzu with sweetheart sale prices on all 98 Pontiacs, including Bonnevilles, Grand Ams, Grand Prix, and Sunfires. Give yourself a Valentine. $12,995 for a 98 Grand Am with all the features you love. Or $11,995 for a 98 Sunfire. 3.9% and 5.9% financing is available. And register to win one of five nights at a bed and breakfast during the sweetheart sale at Woodfin Pontiac, Wooddale at Florida. With two great chairs for one low price, all the chairs at Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries are moving twice as fast. But hurry in, because it all ends soon. There will be more to Valentine's this year than flowers and candy. Saturday, February 14th, the LSU School of Veterinary Medicine will sponsor its 16th annual open house, Animal Magnetism, at the Vet School on South Stadium Drive. This year's open house features more than 60 exhibits, including Mike the Tiger, Hildy the Fistulated Cow, a teddy bear repair hospital, a petting zoo, a parade of breeds, and much more. It'll be fun and educational for the whole family. The LSU Vet School's open house, 9 to 4, Saturday, February 14th. This WAFB Channel 9 Black History Moment is sponsored by Camelot Career College. Often imitated but never duplicated, Southern's 170-member band is under the direction of Dr. Isaac Gregg. A Southern graduate, he has taken the band to perform for world leaders, a Super Bowl, and presidential inaugural parades. After almost 30 years as band director, Gregg says the philosophy he shares with his band students is, make it sound. This WAFB Channel 9 Black History Moment is sponsored by Camelot Career College. When you see news happening, dial star zero nine. A free call on your Bell South Mobility cellular phone. Keep in mind they're going to be tightening down traffic in that very spot in about half an hour. Well, Cupid is studying his arrow at this very moment, aiming for the Valentine Day bullseye. And in case you haven't gone shopping yet, you have less than a day left. Some go with the traditional candy and roses and others opt for a night on the town. Our Valentina Wilson, though, went Valentine hunting today to find the kind of love that lasts long after the flowers are gone. How do I love thee? Let me show you the ways. Some say it with flowers. Be mine, love Robert. He's from my husband. <laughs> How about a night on the town? A Valentine's concert with the 70s group Confunction. Think red, think love, think hot. Let's have a good time. But Mabel and Cornelius Dunn don't need all the frills and thrills. You see, they've got each other. Love we had, we have. It's not the love they have now. See, we have real love. Maybelle and Cornelius didn't have a real wedding back in the 40s, but they made up for it on their 50th anniversary by walking down the aisle for the very first time. The Dunn celebrated their golden anniversary last June, but their love story began in kindergarten. That was the day when we, uh, I guess, started making eyes at each other. All these years later, they're still making eyes at each other. Maybell remembers their first Valentine's card. I love you. You don't remember that note you ought to have in that. Do you love me? <laughs> I, that's what I wrote to Papa, you know. The Duns don't write love letters these days, but they do exchange Valentine's gifts. As for the secret to their marriage, it's one part love, two parts patience. I believe that the secret to a long marriage is, uh, you just got to learn to give and take. Yeah, right. I, what that baby going to say, oh, Papa, kiss Momo. Happy Valentine's Day from Valentina Wilson. And tune in at 10 for WAP 9 News tonight. Maybe you've been told a wives' tale like people blowing smoke in your ear can soothe an earache. Don't eat certain things with other things. Tonight, our 9 News Extra tests the things your mother always told you. You'll find out if mom was always right. Let's hope she was. Tune in at 10 for that story, plus a guy who'd rather fight than switch.
Join us at 10 o'clock. Tonight on Hard Copy. The truth behind the headlines from across the country and around the world. Washington, D.C. Her name's on everyone's lips, but now it's the beret on Monica Lewinsky's head that's topping the news. We'll tell you why Chelsea Clinton could be the victim of a presidential hat trick. Los Angeles.